I played Division One basketball at Colgate University, and I still mightily struggle with confidence when I was in high school. In this video, I'm gonna give you three practical techniques you can use to increase your confidence for when you step on the court. Tell me if this sounds familiar because during my first couple years of high school, this is how my basketball games usually went. If I made my first shot, I would tend to be confident and aggressive throughout the rest of the game. However, if I missed that first shot, there were times when I wouldn't even take another shot for the rest of the game. So how did I change this? Where does confidence in basketball actually come from? These practices have worked for me over the years and I truly believe they can benefit your game. It's interesting because for a long time, I thought confidence was something that was kind of inherent. We all have those teammates that just have unabashed confidence. It doesn't matter how many shots they miss, they're always gonna take the next one. Think of someone like J.R. Smith. And then I thought there were guys like me in high school who were more realistic. If I missed one or two shots, I started telling myself, well, maybe it's just not my day. I'll stop shooting. What the hell was I thinking? What I realized as I got older, and especially when I got to college, is that confidence can be learned. It can be trained. Anyone can implement a confident mindset into their basketball repertoire as long as they have the right idea of how it works. There are studies that show that if you put a pencil into your mouth forcing you to smile, your mood can actually shift and you will become happier. You are tricking your brain into having an emotion. My freshman and sophomore year of high school, I would be training or working out, and if I missed one or two shots, I would start telling myself, you suck, you're not a good shooter, stop missing. It was probably the thing that I struggled with most when I was in high school. Just like how putting a pencil in your mouth can trick your mind into being happier, Continuously telling yourself you're awful can trick your mind into thinking just that. Maybe I'm not that good at basketball. You'll begin to manifest this in your actual game and you'll lose confidence. It becomes a vicious cycle. Let's take a step back and make something clear that is seemingly obvious. You need to be putting in the work to become confident in your basketball abilities. This is the foundation, the first step in drawing on your inner confidence. Get in the gym, get countless shots up, work on your handle, work on your finishing. Do all the things that every single elite player has done before you or else you don't even really deserve to be confident in the first place. All right, I'm glad that's settled. Now, here's the trick. You know that saying, fake it till you make it? Well, here is the process that I went through to become more confident. When I was training my basketball skills, which was almost every day in the summer going into my junior year of high school, instead of talking to myself negatively when I missed shots, I would force myself not to react whenever I missed a shot. It felt strained at first, and it was really difficult for me not to clap my hands or curse under my breath or tell myself the stuff that I had been telling myself for years. But I made a conscious effort not to react. Over time, I taught myself not to care about individual misses. I wouldn't get down on myself during training, and when my games began my junior year, I realized I wasn't getting down on myself when I would miss a shot or turn the ball over. Now, this didn't happen overnight. Remember, before my junior season, I was practicing practicing this mental exercise for about five or six months, really forcing myself not to react. But a change was certainly happening. And I'm not sure if I consciously felt more confident, but I definitely had rid myself of that negative self-talk. So this is a great start. Force yourself not to react and you will start to see that negative self-talk go away. But I don't think you should stop there. You can take it one step further. And this is a technique that I've only really gotten comfortable with over the last couple of years. When you're in your workouts, when you're in the gym with your trainer or by yourself, force yourself to have a rational, insane belief in yourself. Every time you make a shot, laugh out loud. Tell yourself in your mind, I'm the best shooter in the gym, the best shooter on my team, the best shooter in the state. Actively be positive with yourself in your workouts, and over time you will build the mental reps of having positive self-talk. Think about it. If you never react when you miss shots, and you tell yourself how elite you are when you make shots, your confidence can't help but tilt in the direction of positivity. And the great part is, no one even has to know you're doing this. It's all happening in your head, but it will help you substantially when you get on the court. Remember, I was in your shoes. I was so inexcusably hard on myself. And for what? What was I doing it for? Maybe I thought it would make me work harder, but in reality, it was just crippling the skills that I was working so hard on gaining in the first place. I think lack of confidence, even in sports, can actually stem from insecurity. So I wanna to touch on this issue for my third point. 
I was always someone that cared so much what other people thought of me, especially in high school. And again, this is something that I've gotten better with over time, just like you will. There is this interesting psychological phenomenon called the spotlight effect, which is basically this idea that we are always so worried about what other people think of us when in reality, everybody's going about their business really just thinking about themselves. Think about it like this. When you airball a shot in a game or in practice, you might get embarrassed thinking that everybody's gonna start making fun of you and it's gonna become this big deal. When in reality, no one cares. Everybody airball shots. Realize that a missed shot or a missed free throw or a turnover that seems like the end of the world in the moment it really doesn't matter at all. I probably remember less than 20 shots over my whole high school career. So all those other makes and misses literally didn't matter at all. And I bet my teammates don't remember any of the shots I took. So looking back, why when I took a shot did I think the stakes were life or death? Now, luckily you can learn from me and if this is your mindset, you can start to change it right now. If you start telling yourself now that shots you take don't actually matter, you will stop dwelling on your last miss, you will give yourself more of a chance of making your next one. So let's recount these three main ideas because all of them are quite simple and are really just mental tricks you can use right now to increase your confidence. Number one, stop reacting when you miss shots in your workouts. Number two, have irrational, illogical belief in yourself when you make shots in your workouts. And number three, realize that individual shots do not matter, you will not remember them, put them away and move on to the next thing. Getting to a point where you can make your dreams a reality happens now, in the gym, working on those physical and mental reps. You need to be working on your skills, of course, but don't forget to put in the time with your mind as well. This is one of the biggest lessons I learned as I got older and I went further through my basketball career. So I want you to stay ahead of the curve and start working on it now.